Our call to worship this morning is taken from Psalm 68, and I'm reading the first four verses. May God arise, may his enemies be scattered, may his foes flee before him. May you blow them away like smoke, as wax melts before the fire. May the wicked perish before God. But may the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. Sing to God, sing in praise of his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. Rejoice before him. His name is the Lord. We have heard God's call to us. We have heard his words speaking to us. Let us praise him in song when we join together in singing that hymn, when we walk with the Lord, trust and obey. Good morning everybody. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and I wish to welcome you to our service today where we've just gathered to praise, to worship and just become silent before Almighty God. But before we get started, may I inquire on how you are doing today? Are you still coping in these difficult times? I hope and I trust and I pray that you will just continue reaching out to God, that you will put your hand in His, and that you will journey 
with him. Just one or two intimations today. Please take note that on the 30th of July, we have our annual general meeting. Please come and join us for that. It will be part of our service. And as we do that, we discuss the business of the church. This is where you come and you come and say your say in the congregation. So I remind you again, 30 July at in the church as part of the service. Then of course on the 25th of June we have Julius Megan that will be taking the service here. He's an evangelist singer and he is wonderful just to come and listen to. So please make a note of that. It's the 25th of July at 9 o'clock the morning in the service that he will be here to lead us and to lead our worship. Then also on the 23rd of July, 23rd of July, we have our Poiki Course Day. Tickets are available at 50 bucks a ticket. Please get your tickets, come and join us. It's going to be a wonderful day of fellowship again yeah, at the church. So 23rd of July. So there's three dates to remember. 25th of June, Julius Megan. 23rd of July is the Poikikos Day. The 30th of July is our annual general meeting. That's all intimations I have for today. But let us continue to do what we came to do. Our first lesson comes from 1 Peter chapter 4, reading verses 12 to 14. And then I'm jumping over to chapter 5, verses 6 to 11. Hear the word of God. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice inasmuch as you participate in the sufferings of Jesus Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power for ever and ever. Amen. Come, let us sing. Let us praise the Lord as we sing. Your people sing praises.
Please join me as we come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, O Lord, we greet you this morning as we come before you, celebrating in our hearts and praising and worshipping you. O dear Lord God, dear Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, we come proclaiming that you are the God of gods. And as we approach your eternal throne, we know that you, Jesus, are at the right hand of the Father. Yes, Lord, you are there to reign with Almighty God, our triune God. We've come to praise you and to worship you, to bow our heads and bend our knees. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you, Lord, for Ascension Day. We've just celebrated Ascension Day where we heard how you were taken up, taken up to be with your Father in bodily form. And yes, Lord, we know that you had to ascend so that you could send us our Advocate, the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for that. And Lord, as we go now into the interim period, awaiting the arrival of our Advocate as we celebrate it at Pentecost, we just pray that you will be with us, that you will journey with us, and where we have all these questions in our minds, Lord, that you will just answer them and that you will be with them, be with each and every one of us. Oh Lord, as we've gathered today, Lord, to praise you and worship you, we just pray your blessing on our service, that you will hold us very tightly, and that you will speak to us, Lord. Oh Lord, we have tuned into this online service today, Lord, because we need to hear your word to us. We need to hear what it is you expect from us. So, Lord, we pray that as we await your message, that you will just open our hearts and our minds, that you will open our eyes, that you will open our ears, that we may be attentive to receive your word today. But, Lord, very often we hear things and then we forget them. So we want to pray, Lord, that as we hear it today, we will receive it and that we will put it into practice and that we will live according to that word. So, Lord, we pray, be with us now. Hold us. Bless us and teach us. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our second lesson comes from Acts chapter 1, verse 6 to 14. Acts chapter 1, verse 6 to 14. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the time or dates. The Father has said by his own authority, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said. Why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with a woman 
and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. I read thus far. May the Lord bless to us his holy word today. As we prepare ourselves to receive the message, let us ask the Lord to open our eyes so that we can see Jesus. Let us ask him to open our ears so that we can hear Jesus and that he will speak to us. So come let us sing, Open Our Eyes, Lord. So folks, last Thursday, the 18th of May, we celebrated Ascension Day. Yes, and as Yvonne put it, 
a lot of us don't even celebrate Ascension Day anymore. And in the old days, it used to be a public holiday known as a Christian holiday for Ascension Day. But it is no longer. And a lot of people do not seem to understand the importance of Ascension Day. But today, I don't want to speak about that. I want to speak about what happened with Ascension and after Ascension. Now we read very clearly in our passage today in Acts that the disciples were standing with Jesus and right before his very eyes, Jesus was taken up to heaven. They saw him ascending and they were standing looking and then Jesus was covered in a cloud. And despite Jesus being covered in a cloud, they still stood there looking up to where they last saw him. And obviously they couldn't see him anymore. And then two men in white, I believe two angels, appeared to them and said to them, Men, why are you staring up into the sky? This Jesus will return again. But you see, the big thing here is we must remember that Jesus promised that when he ascended to go to be with his Father in heaven, he would send us the Holy Spirit. He would send us the Advocate, our Guider and our Friend. Now we all know that right now Pentecost has not happened. That is next Sunday the 28th. And we're in an interim period now where some of us feel very empty. And a lot of people refer to it as the in-between period. Now when you're in the in-between period, it is so often that we want to know when is it going to happen. Like in the case of the disciples, when is the Holy Spirit coming? When is Pentecost? When is this coming? What are the going to be the difficulties with the, with the coming of the Holy Spirit? What is going to happen? It's exactly the same. Just cast your minds back to the time when we were in COVID. We were all wondering in COVID, when is this period going to end? How many of us are going to survive? What is going to be the after effect of COVID? When is the precise time it's going to be finished? And you know what? I want to say to you that living with ambivalence, in other words, living with this doubt, living with this not knowing, symbolizes a strong faith. Because we don't know, but yet what we do know is that Jesus is alive, that he's been taken up into heaven, and he's with Almighty God. And by knowing that, we cling to our faith. And it's okay to say, you know what? I don't know. We've seen how many people, how many people have come and have tried to predict the return of Jesus Christ. We've seen so many predictions on then Jesus will be returning that day, the end of the world will be that day. And you know what? Jesus is very clear. He says, it is not for us to know when or what, because God has set those times. In another passage, Jesus even says, not even I know, only the Father knows. So you see, at the moment, we're in an in-between time to Pentecost. And when Pentecost comes, we're again into another in-between time. An in-between time awaiting 
the return of Jesus Christ. And because we don't know, it creates questions. And questions we don't necessarily have the answer to. And again, I repeat myself. And it's okay to say, I don't know. I don't know when Jesus is coming. But you know what? We do know. And we've seen what Jesus has taught us. We've seen in the scriptures everything he did on earth. And in these in-between times, Jesus has commissioned us to be witnesses. To be witnesses for him. Brian McLaren, the theologian, says, Many of us have interpreted Jesus' ascension and enthronement to mean it is now time to get to work living in the light of what Jesus has already taught us. Did you hear that? In this in-between time, both now awaiting Pentecost and both after when we have the Holy Spirit, it is a time to get to work. You must remember, we live in a world that is filled with darkness. It is filled with evil. And we are people living in the light. And we have already been taught by Jesus. And therefore, we must go out and witness to the world. We are convinced. And you need to realize that we are not yet awaiting for Jesus to appear for us. But rather, we are rather waiting for Jesus Christ to appear in us. And how does that happen? Through all his teachings, by following his example. And when he is in us, and he is in your Christian brother, then Jesus has appeared among us and in us. Do you understand that? He is in us, he is among us, and he is through us. Why do I emphasize this today? Because it is so important that we allow Jesus Christ to work through us, among us, and in us. Now can you imagine if we as a church, and I'm not referring just to those that are in church on Tin Road, I'm referring to all churches together. Now if Jesus is amongst us and in us, and he's working through us, and we all take hands to witness about him to the world. You see, Jesus wants everybody to know about him. And he wants everybody to follow him. So that the whole world may be reconciled with Almighty God once again. You see, what matters is the work that will bring glory to God. It is our obedience to God's calling. It is our obedience to constant prayer. To constant study of the scriptures so that we may know and that we may witness to a broken world I repeat we are living in the light and we are a light in the darkness and it's in this darkness we reveal Jesus Christ but I must warn you that when this happens, it will not be easy. 
Peter in our passage today proclaims that we must be joyful in our faith in times of trial. In other words, he says to us, stand firm in your faith. And Peter encourages rejoicing when we suffer because of Jesus Christ. He uses the words that if we are cursed because of Christ, we are actually blessed. In verse 14 of what Peter writes, he says, If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. So you see, folks, we know that if we go out into this world, a modern day and age, that we are going to be persecuted because of our faith. Because why? It is because the prince of darkness is still on control of most of the earth. You see, the kingdom of God still needs to expand. And that is why Jesus says that we must go to all the ends of the earth and we must tell everybody about him. And you see, folks, to a certain extent we are failing because we don't do this, because we are scared of being persecuted. Peter says the rejoicing in times of trial is prophetic. We need to know that when we are suffering, we are suffering for the greater purpose. Because it is in Jesus that we get hope and that he comes back. That we will be part and parcel of him. In the psalm we read today, may God's enemies be scattered. May his foes flee before him. May he blow them away like smoke as wax melts before the fire. May the wicked perish before God. Now, folks, you may say to me, that was in the time of Psalms. But you know something? I want to teach you something today. That the closer you move to Jesus, the harder the enemy tries to drive a wedge between you and Jesus. We see when you get closer to God, how things start happening, a classic example, how things start going wrong in your life, how things start going wrong in everything you're doing. That is the time you stand firm in your faith and you denounce and chase the evil one away from you. And that suffering is coming. The devil does not like to be defeated. And he is already defeated. And therefore, therefore, you rejoice and you rebuke him. And you chase him away. The people out there need to know that the world they had, the world as it is known, has changed. And they need to know that there is a new reality, a new world, a new life, a life of hope, a life of joy, and a life of pleasure. And that life has brought about the Lord who reigns in authority. We read recently about Paul giving the order to stone Stephen. And what did Stephen see? The Holy Spirit gave him the vision of Jesus at the right hand of God. So you see, the ascension we've just celebrated celebrates and is associated with the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So, 
Do you think the devil likes that? That he was able to defeat death? That he was able to feed, to defeat the devil? No, he doesn't. And therefore he will try everything in his power to try and stray you away from Almighty God. The last point I want to speak about today. This is all done by Jesus because he wants unity. Now I know I've spoken so much about unity in the past and it is so important and I mentioned just now that we we crave and we don't want necessarily Jesus to appear to us but in us and through us and among us. So you see the greatest thing is, and I mentioned this previously, is that if Jesus is in us and we allow him to work through us and your brother sitting next to you in the church or as a church community and we allow Jesus to work through us and in us, then the kingdom of God grows. Remember, and I've said this many a time, remember just after the death of Jesus, there was an explosion on the growth of Christianity in the ancient Near East. And that explosion was not as a result of good ministers or good big churches, but that was because of Jesus working through his people. There was love. There was care. And because of that, people felt attracted to that because they were loved. They belonged to one another. Folks, what do you see in a modern day world? Is there love out there? Do people care about one another? No, they don't. Because individualism is rife it's healthy and it's well throughout the world that western philosophy of individualism it is my right to do what i want when i want and how i want and that is not what jesus is about jesus wants you to share jesus wants you to unite with your brothers care for them love them so that they have a place and you have a place where you belong. I cannot emphasize enough that we as a church need to unite. We need to be one so that we can declare the kingdom of God to a secular world out there. Folks, as we await the Holy Spirit, or to celebrate the Holy Spirit, let us remember that we have been called for a purpose. And that purpose is to witness for Jesus Christ. We have been called to rejoice in our trials and our tribulations so that all the honor and the glory may go to Jesus. My challenge to you is that as we anticipate and celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, let us allow Jesus to work through us and in us so that people may see his presence. Amen. Come, let us pray. Oh dear Lord God, we have heard your word to us today, Lord. And yes, Lord, there is so much we can still learn. Oh Lord, as we await to celebrate the arrival of your Holy Spirit, we pray, Lord, that you will help us to be your witnesses, just as we have heard in your scriptures today. Thank you, dear Lord God, that you take an interest in us 
and that you sent your son to die upon a cross and that your son is seated at your right hand and ruling over us. Thank you that you take the time to love us. Thank you that you give us the power and the strength to be your witnesses to a world that has become so secular. Thank you, Lord, that you love us. So, Lord, as we go into a world now, may we go and witness for you. May we go and tell the whole world that your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, is alive and well, and that he is our hope. Oh yes, Lord Jesus, you are our hope and we know that you are trustworthy and that you are with us all the time. So Lord, as we go into a world, help us to be obedient to your calling and help us to trust you. As that song says, trust and obey for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus and to trust and obey. So Lord, we thank you and we praise you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us conclude our service today by singing a song that tells the whole world that God is good all the time. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good yes, he is. all the time. Through the darkest night his light will shine, God is good, yes he is, God is good, all the time. shadows all around. Do not fear, He will guide you, He will keep you safe and sound. He has promised to never leave you or forsake you, and His word is true. God is good all the time. So unworthy, still for us he chose to die. He filled us with his Holy Spirit. Now we can stand and testify that his love is everlasting and his mercy. the play.
plans you have for me. My life is in your hands, and through the eyes of faith I can clearly see that God is good all the time. He put a song. Folks, once again, we have come to the end of our service. So receive now the blessing. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with us, yet now today, and forevermore. Amen. Folks, I wish you a wonderful week that lies ahead. May you journey with God, and may He bless you richly. Remember when the going gets tough, reach out to God, take his hand and let him walk with you. So until we meet again, stay safe, stay healthy and always remember that Jesus is only a prayer way. Goodbye for now.